But Africa is already experiencing climate change impacts. We've seen that in the Sahelian region, which is incredibly dry land area, where we're seeing a lot of flooding happening and we're seeing severe droughts. And here within the East Africa region, we're seeing all these combinations of floods and droughts as well, and locusts that showed up earlier this year. So these impacts, even as we're in the middle of a pandemic, are still being felt. What we're beginning to see as well with such impacts from climate change is that there are changes in food systems, for example, specific foods that cannot grow due to droughts or crop failure, which we're seeing as uh, due to extreme weather events, you know, high temperatures, less rain. And so all of this is manifesting itself in very different ways in different regions, depending on the circumstances. And the implications of these are huge for not just the communities, but mostly women and children. Some of the actual um, studies have shown that we're going to see very extreme uh, weather event events intensifying in the middle of the century. But we're also going to see a lot of disease prevalence. For example, we're going to see certain plant diseases manifesting due to these temperature shifts. And also we're going to see shifts in landscape. So some vegetation that would grow in highland areas, for example, because of the increase in temperature, this one to 1.5 degree increase in temperature, we're going to even see that these plants are no longer growing or they're just dying off or something is happening within the landscape. We've seen that specific species are disappearing due to increase in temperatures. We've seen this mass extinction of insects and already there's a danger that we will lose furthermore plant and animal species or even actual microbes that are very relevant for growing food, for instance. And so this is in effect a very dangerous period that we could be entering. What's happening with, with what climate change is doing is to also make a shift in the dynamics uh, in, in the social fabric of society across Africa. We've seen this manifested, for instance, in the Sahelian region where people migrate because, you know, food can no longer grow or their lake system is shrinking or even, you know, food systems are changing and they do not have enough supply. Now, what that has um, implications on is also the economic dynamic because obviously our countries uh, depend on people for labor, human capital. So with these changes, um, already we're going to see the ripple effect of the actual uh, multiple layered um, effects of climate change and its impacts on society. I think we need to bear in mind that something has to be done because a lot of these landscapes where we see the effects of climate change are severely degraded. So we need to restore them and the places that are not degraded, we need to conserve them to make sure that they're supplying the very services that we need as humans and also for our economic and social and, and also environmental elements of, of living. But we also need to be positive about um, the role of technology, the role of innovation and also the role of things like artificial intelligence to gather data where um, a lot of innovation and solutions are happening on the ground to be able to share these experiences across the continent. The African continent, like any other place in the world, has found itself in the middle of this pandemic, COVID-19. And I think what this pandemic does provide is an opportunity to learn from it because I feel personally that this is a test case for a potential compounded and effects of climate change. And we need to learn from this pandemic in terms of how we respond and also how we recover, but also how we treat nature. We've seen some really exciting examples of what, you know, the African continent is doing around addressing the impacts of climate change. For example, the African Union Great Green Wall, where this is the world's largest restoration initiative. It's absolutely amazing. The communities there are involved in restoring this mosaic landscape, be it, you know, planting trees, planting grasses, and also making sure that the, the interventions are really meaningful and important. So this is one of the really classic examples because because it covers over 21 countries within the Sahelian region. And we're beginning to see how the land is beginning to respond to this restoration agenda and, and really addressing the if effects. And, and we're beginning to see in some of the areas, you know, rainfall patterns beginning to shift a little bit. And also just the engagement of community. We have to bear in mind that ultimately it's the people that live at the community level that are responsible for making sure that um, their actions are meaningful and also for their livelihoods.
I'm feeling incredibly hopeful. Um, I mean, if we just look around the, uh, the youth voices across Africa, if there's been a moment in our human history where, you know, youth voices have been at the table and not just at the table to listen, but to really provide solutions and action, it's now. So I'm really excited about that. The role of women, um, also at the leadership level, we're beginning to see that shift and change as well. We're seeing more uh, women in the political process as part of that decision-making process. And also at the technical level, the science, we're beginning to see the emergence of science across the African continent. And lastly, what we're beginning to see is the political drive and also a demonstration that climate change brings about an intersectionality of issues, be it you know dealing with plastics, be it dealing with food systems, be it dealing with economics or pollution. All of this is interrelated and there's a lot of drives and leadership being um, really shown across the African continent, which is great.